it's great to be here and have the opportunity to talk to you about the work I've been doing at Gritstone. Um, before I do, I just want to give you a little bit of a background of what, who I am and uh, what my background is. Um, so I got my degree in biology at Cornell, and that was my first taste of research, um, where I was studying an invasive species of parakeet called the monk parakeet. And that was a lot of fun, but I wanted to do something more uh, geared towards human health and disease. So I decided to get my PhD at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in New York um, in molecular biology and genetics. And uh, while I was there, I joined a lab focused in cancer biology and um, did my thesis on uh, understanding the genetics of leukemia um, using mouse models. Um, and then I decided to move across the country to Genentech for my postdoctoral fellowship, where I continued using mouse models to understand the genetics, um, this time of lung cancer. And it was there that I learned two really important things. Um, one, that I really liked technology development, and um, two, that I wanted to do something that was actually making a product and that would go then to patients. Um, so I um, became a scientist at Theranos, um, where I got really valuable experience developing tests. And um, I was able to then take that test development experience, combine it with my background in cancer biology, um, and bring that to Gritstone Oncology, where I am now a scientist in vaccine technology, um, where I've been for about three months now. Um, and so at Gritstone, we are focused on turning tumor mutations into personalized cancer vaccines. Um, and so before I tell you what that means, um, I'll just put it into context for you. Um, so currently, a treatment for lung cancer, as an example, involves surgery to remove the tumor, as well as chemotherapy. But the lung cancer five-year survival rate is 18%, and more than half of people die within one year. There's another class of drugs called targeted therapeutics, and these can prolong survival. Um, but they're only effective in a small subset of patients, and resistance is really common. So there's really a need for more effective therapies and more options for cancer patients. And so what is cancer, first of all? So cancer is when mutations occur in normal cells that cause those cells to become abnormal and multiply. And as those cells multiply and grow, they gain more and more mutations, which make them more and more abnormal as they become malignant and invasive. And like snowflakes, no two people have identical tumors. And so what is a mutation? So your genes are made up of DNA, which is a code. That code gets turned into RNA molecules, which then become proteins. And these proteins do all the functions within your cells. And in cancer, there's a change in the code, which then leads to a mutant protein. And the mutant proteins are on cancer cells, but they're not on normal cells. And there's a huge number of mutations, and each individual cancer is different. So it's very difficult to develop a drug that can treat all of them. So at Gritstone, we're taking a different approach. Um, and what we want to do is harness the body's own immune system to attack cancer cells. And so before I explain that, I'm first going to explain how the immune system works very simply. Um, so imagine you have an infection with a flu virus there's a certain type of immune cell called an antigen-presenting cell, and it goes around your body and it picks up little bits of foreign protein, like one that would come from a flu virus. And then it uses that to teach a different type of immune cell called a T cell. And you can imagine a T cell is like a drug-sniffing dog, and the antigen-presenting cell is like a dog trainer, using this little bit of foreign peptide, foreign protein, to train the T cell uh, what to recognize. The T cell then becomes activated, and goes around your body and finds the cells that have been infected with the flu and kills them. And so what we want to do is use the same system to teach the T cells to recognize cancer mutant proteins so that they can then go around your body, find the cancer cells, and kill them. And importantly, these will only kill cancer cells and not normal cells, unlike chemotherapy, for example, which is toxic to both, which is why it has such devastating side effects. And so in order to do this, we're designing therapeutic vaccines that stimulate the immune system to attack the individual's tumor based on their cancer mutant proteins. And I say therapeutic vaccine to differentiate it from a prophylactic vaccine like measles, mumps, and flu, which you're familiar with, which um, 
are preventative, but they work in a very similar manner to teach the T cells to recognize foreign little bits of foreign protein in the case of the prophylactic vaccines or little bits of mutant protein in the case of the cancer vaccines. Um, and so these cancer vaccines are also personalized. So for each patient, when a patient comes in with a diagnosis, they'll have a biopsy and a little bit of the tumor will be removed. We will then sequence those tumors to identify cancer mutant proteins and then synthesize a vaccine specific for that patient. And this has some clear challenges. Um, the main ones being identifying all the cancer mutant proteins in every single patient, and then out of the hundreds of mutations, identifying those most likely to induce an immune response, and then delivering those mutant proteins to immune cells. So the first one has actually become really easy in recent years, but only in the last 10 years or so. Um, with improvements in DNA se sequencing technology, um, and the cost of DNA sequencing has really plummeted um, since about 2007. So now it's very feasible and reasonable to sequence um, every single patient and identify those mutations. The second problem, identifying those most likely to induce immune response, is still very challenging. Um, and at Gritstone, we've put a lot of effort into developing a prediction algorithm based on functional data. Um, that's from patient samples. Um, and then the next problem, delivering those mutant proteins to immune cells, is um, what I've been working on and my main focus at Gritstone. Um, and so you can imagine we could take these little pieces of foreign protein and stick them straight into people. And so people have done that, and it does work, kind of. So, um, but we think we can do it better. Um, by again, harnessing the body's own machinery to our advantage. So we're gonna go one step backwards, and instead of injecting the proteins themselves, we're gonna inject the RNA that encodes those proteins. And we're gonna deliver those into cells packaged into something called nanoparticles, which are kind of like simple little cells that we synthesize in a lab. And these act as a mailman to deliver that package into the antigen-presenting cells, which they can then teach the T cells. Um, and so what do I actually do? Um, I'm a scientist. I work in a lab. Uh, I wear a white lab coat. And I do experiments to, to test these vaccines. Um, and so here's some pictures of me in the lab with a colleague. Um, doing an experiment uh, to test these vaccines. And I will just kind of give you an overview of uh, a recent experiment that we did and how it worked to test this uh, vaccine technology. So we start first by designing and synthesizing DNA um, that encodes our mutant proteins. We then can combine that with an enzyme called RNA polymerase in a tube, um, and a couple hours later, we generate RNA that is an exact copy of that DNA. We can then package that into nanoparticles and inject that into mice that have tumors um, in order to immunize them, and then measure their survival and their immune response. Uh, and we measure their immune response by counting the number of those activated T cells or those drug-sniffing dogs um, that we find in the mouse's body after vac vaccination. And so cancer vaccines are not a new idea. They've been around a long time, but it's only recently become feasible at all. And that's due to some really important breakthroughs in the last couple of years in understanding how cancer cells interact with immune cells. Um, and this has led to a huge new field called cancer immunotherapy. Um, and we're certainly not the only company who are trying to harness the immune system as treatment in various ways. In fact, there's at least two other small biotech companies in our building that are also using the immune system to attack cancer, although with, although with completely different approaches. Um, and so it's a really exciting time to be in the field, and there's a real possibility that these different approaches can synergize with each other, as well as with other existing cancer therapies to really boost the efficacy of cancer therapies and really not just prolong survival a little, but have a big impact on patients. Um, in addition, we're also personalizing this cancer therapy which again in the past has been an extremely challenging thing to do. But because of some many recent advances in a large variety of different fields, like immunotherapy, but as well as DNA sequencing, bioinformatics, and also uh, in advances in manufacturing, because as you can imagine, what we really need to do is 
uh, ra very rapidly and robustly manufacture vaccines for individual patients. Um, that's really enabled us to move forward with this. And vice versa, some of the advances that we're making in bioinformatics and manufacturing could help lead to personalization in other types of, of cancer therapies, um, as well as other types of disease. And hopefully this personalization will really give us the ability to treat many more patients who would not respond to current cancer therapies. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much for your attention.